friends i am dr amdekar in this video i am going to discuss about the indications and interpretation of liver function test let's first look at what are the functions of the liver that we want to test the most important functions are of course the production of proteins typically albumin and also clotting factors but besides that there are many others like lipoprotein crp or complement or carrier proteins like ceruloplasmin transferrin and so on and so forth but more relevant to our clinical practice are albumin and clotting factors and one more important production of course by the liver is bile and here even the metabolism comes in like this bile is produced by the liver but it's mixed with bile acids which are produced from cholesterol by the liver and this bile then is transported into the intestine which helps in digestion thus liver is also involved in digestion and metabolism and metabolism of various types like amino acids of course glucose fats and so on and so forth in fact that is another important function but we indirectly measure that and i will discuss how we do that so production and digestion metabolism and then of course you have another important function and that is the involvement of more than production and digestion metabolism is also detoxification the liver is a major organ which tries to take care of toxins that we often ingest directly or indirectly and thus largely these are the major functions of the liver that we talk about therefore we must consider in clinical practice the most important test that we do often are one of course bilirubin direct and indirect then enzymes like intracellular enzymes like alt and ast or hgot hgpt and also alkaline phosphatase and ggt relevant to the biliary tract disease besides that there are also other enzymes which specifically could be deficient and occasionally such diseases are also seen with jaundice where there may not be any other symptom or sign of a liver disease and this could be due to specific enzyme deficiency like acriglanazole for example or gilbert and then on the other hand you have the rotor or a dubin johnson giving you a direct bilirubin having said this <clears throat> what would be the indications of doing a liver function test jaundice of course is the main indication of doing liver function test but besides that even when there is no jaundice a hepatomegaly of obscure origin would demand doing the baseline liver function test and now even beyond that there could be an acute encephalopathy where the common primary neurological illnesses are ruled out clinically and it could be a metabolic encephalopathy coming from an acute liver disease and in which there is no rise in bilirubin but there is a high ammonia and of course hypoglycemia so again a specific ammonia and glucose levels also become sometimes important in acute liver cell disease where absence of jaundice and often absence of hepatomegaly could also be the indication of doing a liver function test having said this let's see how to interpret this liver function test the most common of course is uh, bilirubin direct and indirect and please make a note that when the rise in bilirubin is very minimal but if the direct fraction is more than 20% of the total then it is called a direct bilirubinemia whereas in other situations when the total bilirubin is reasonably higher any 
direct bilirubin more than 2 mg percent would be called a direct bilirubinemia. Therefore, it is not whether indirect bilirubin is more than direct or otherwise, but it is direct bilirubin more than 20% of the total or more than 2 mg percent would be called a direct bilirubinemia. That is important. Another important point of the bilirubin interpretation is that it takes about 48 hours for the bilirubin to rise after the hepatocyte damage and that's how in rise syndrome or acute hepatic encephalopathy the bilirubin is not high but the ammonia and the glucose are abnormal. This much then about bilirubin and at times it's a biphasic response which means both indirect and direct are increased which is really a direct bilirubinemia because it's more than 2 mg percent but the hepatocyte disease also disturbs the uptake of indirect bilirubin by the liver and therefore there is a slight rise of indirect bilirubin as well. Of course we all know that if it's only the indirect bilirubin and not direct then you know it's likely to be an acute hemolysis. Having said about bilirubin, what about the enzymes like ALT and AST? ALT is more specific to the liver which you all know and AST indicates a systemic disease which also has involved the liver and therefore it's important to differentiate between a primary and a secondary liver disease by doing ALT and AST both. The next is of course albumin and globulin and it's important that in a chronic liver disease albumin goes down and globulin is either normal or even increased, increased as in case of immunological uh, liver disease but the ratio is altered, normally albumin is more than globulin and so reversal of albumin-globulin ratio is considered one of the important liver function tests. But don't forget that even in nephrotic syndrome there is a such reversal but the albumin is extremely low and globulin is normal or even a bit high because alpha 2 is increased and therefore reversal of albumin globulin is not an important issue but a lowering of albumin with a near normal or increased globulin is important along with the rest of the liver function test. Having talked about albumin globulin a prothrombin time or an INR is another liver function test which suggests an extensive damage to the hepatocellular function and therefore it indicates a seriousness of the disease. Like in acute hepatic encephalopathy there could be a bleeding occurring and therefore largely these are the four tests that we commonly do in clinical practice. Besides that of course we could do some specific tests like imaging is done today to pick up fat in the liver in an obese person or you may have also fibro scan which can pick up uh, serotic changes or a fibrotic changes in the liver. But these are not liver function tests. These are helping the etiology of a liver disease. So then friends summarizing, largely we in clinical practice consider bilirubin, enzymes, albumin globulin, and the prothrombin time and INR. And look at the interpretation which is easy for us to go by. Bilirubin indicates extent of the disease. As I said, more than 80-85% of the hepatocytes need to be damaged before the bilirubin rises. So bilirubin is an extent of the disease. The enzymes, higher the enzymes like ALT, it suggests acute hepatocellular damage and therefore such enzymes suggest acuity of the disease. An albumin goes down in a chronic liver disease. Thus, low albumin indicates a chronicity of the liver disease and a high prothrombin time or INR indicates the seriousness of the disease. Friends, then it is simple. As a clinician, you want to know, is it an extensive hepatocyte disease? Check bilirubin. You want to know whether a very acute onset hepatocyte damage check for ALT. If you want to know if it's a chronic liver disease, hepatocyte disease, then you look for low albumin. And if you want to know how serious is the disease, look for prothrombin time or an INR. 
it's so easy for interpretation friends i hope you enjoyed this simplicity and the simple way to remember how to interpret the disease and i hope you continue to be with us on this channel and subsequently we will take more and more such issues for you to discuss with thank you very much